We've all seen these DNA inheritance charts showing we get 50% of our DNA from each of our parents and approximately 25% from each of our grandparents. But my daughter took a DNA test at Ancestry. She did get 26% of her DNA from my mom and 24% from my dad. But on her dad's side, she only got 18% from her paternal grandfather and 32% from her paternal grandmother. My heritage confirms these numbers with 17.6% from this paternal grandfather and 32.3% from this grandmother. Today, I'm going to show you why these numbers aren't mistakes. They're actually a fascinating example of how DNA inheritance really works. Humans have 23 pair of chromosomes as depicted here. They're numbered from the largest basically to the smallest, 1 through 22, and then we have the 23rd pair, which are the sex chromosomes. If you have an XY, you're a male. If you have an XX, you're a female. From each pair, you get one from your dad and one from your mom, although from this diagram, we can't really tell which are from your dad and which are from your mom. But here's chromosome 1, and you get two copies, one from dad, one from mom. On chromosome 11, you get two copies, one from dad, one from mom. And on chromosome 22, you get two copies, one from dad, one from mom. But let's step back and look at what actually happens. So your dad has two copies also, one from his dad and one from his mom. And we're representing these as two different colors of blue. So a dark blue from his dad, a light blue from his mom. So all the blue are your dad. And then when he produces a sperm to create a child, to create you, he mixes some of those chromosomes together. This is a simplification, but basically the two strands of chromosome one come together and they can swap pieces. And we get something like this. So for the most part, you don't get all of your dad's dad's chromosome one, and you don't get all of dad's mom's chromosome one. Instead, you get some mixture, and it's just broken into a few pieces. You can, in fact, get the entire chromosome also. Here we have it on chromosome 11. This time, there was just one break, and you're getting more of your dad's dad than your dad's mom. And then here on chromosome 22, I'm depicting that you got an entirety of your dad's dad and none of your dad's mom. So that DNA has been lost to you. So these points where it switches from, we've got dad's mom and then his dad and then his mom. Each time it switches, when they came together and they swapped those pieces, that's a recombination point. That's where the recombination happens. And you can see we also had one there on chromosome 11. So your dad has those 23 chromosomes, but he has pairs, one from his dad, one from his mom, and he gives you 23 chromosomes and they can be a mixture of his dad's and mom's like this one or this one, or it can be an entirety from his dad or his mom like this one. And that's the DNA you get. So you're getting 50% from your dad, but about 25% from each grandparent, but it's not exact because of this swapping, this recombination. Now the same thing happens on your mom's side. So your mom also has two pair of each chromosome, one from her dad and one from her mom. And again, when she's creating an egg, those came together and they could swap pieces, or you could inherit a full chromosome from her dad or from her mom. So let's take a look at that. This time I've shown some extra um, recombinations, some more recombination points. This one has four recombinations where the DNA switched because this is from her dad and then mom, dad, mom, dad. So this one's very mixed. The next one, we've got just two recombination points and then one. But again, you're getting half of your DNA from your mom because you're getting an entire set from her. She's giving you a chromosome one, a chromosome two, three, four, but she might have recombined those between her dad and mom, or she might give you just all of dad's or all of mom's. But again, you're only getting about 25% from her parents, your grandparents, because of this recombination. So you might skew more towards one grandparent or the other. And this in the end is you with your 23 chromosomes, the 23 pair. I've only shown chromosome one, 11 and 22 here, but you are a mix of half dad, half mom once again, but just about 25% from each of these four grandparents. Because again, you can get more from one grandparent or another, but on average is about 25%. My daughter is fortunate enough that all four of her grandparents have tested. And so we can see these 
segments, these pieces of DNA, how she's inherited them from her four different grandparents. And we can do that on MyHeritage because they have what is called a chromosome browser, which I'll show you in a second. Ancestry doesn't have that, so you have to go to a site that has it. I've logged in on MyHeritage and I'm gonna go to DNA and then DNA tools. And now I need to switch to my daughter's kit and I'm gonna click, click on explore this chromosome browser. Now that we're here on this one-to-many, I can select matches to compare with her. And I'm gonna start by selecting just me and see what that looks like. If I scroll down, you'll see this is only the 22 segments and it does not include the X DNA that my daughter and I share. And we have 22 segments because every chromosome, I am sharing the entire segment with her. And how this works is each of these chromosomes, here's chromosome one, two, and three. In the background, there's a gray bar and that's my daughter. And where my daughter and I are in common, you can see over here, this is marking S as red where it's my daughter and myself. And so it's showing the whole thing is red because we match along that whole thing because I gave my daughter an entire chromosome one and an entire chromosome two, although I probably mixed it up from my parents, so her grandparents. You can compare more than one person at a time. Here we're gonna do two people. So I usually start with dad, mom, dad, mom, dad, mom. Um, that's how, if you're looking at ancestry in a tree, it's always the dad, then the mom, the dad, then the mom. If you hear the noise, that's my kittens. Um, but so I've put my husband and then me. And so in the background, again, there's this light gray chromosome, but the entire thing is red because my husband gave her an entire chromosome one. And then the entire thing is gold or yellow because I gave her an entire chromosome. So it's not very helpful except for to just show you that we do match completely there. Here it shows my husband at 50% where I was only 49.6. I think that's just partly the randomness of how good this works. I, we did not test up my heritage. These are transfers and there can be small mistakes but we each share 22 full segments, those chromosomes one through 22, because we're not looking at the sex chromosomes. But now let me to choose two other people. This time I'm gonna compare my daughter to my dad and my mom. So these are her maternal grandparents. Let's take a look. This time, again, I'm gonna have the dad and then the mom, the male and the female. And so my dad is the red and my mom is the gold. And here on chromosome one, you can see that when I gave chromosome one to my daughter, I brought those two chromosomes together. Of course, I have no, no role in that or no consciousness in that, but those two chromosomes came together in two places, right here and right here. They basically broke and swapped pieces and then this is the chromosome she got. So here she has the gold up to here from my mom and then there was a crossover and then she shares with my dad and then there's a crossover and back to my mom. And here on this one, she has a little bit of my dad's and then mostly her mom's. And here we've got a few more breaks. So dad, mom, dad. And I just wanna do one more because this shows how many times you can break. They don't break tons of times. It's not like they're break breaking 20 or 50 times. They're breaking zero, one, two, three, four, five. And here on chromosome four, there's one, two, three, four breaks. And I don't want you to worry when there's right here, there's a little bit of overlap in red and gold and here there's a little bit. This is just a picture and there, it's not exact. So you could, those are the clean breaks. So this is a great image showing how my daughter inherited DNA from two of her grandparents, her maternal grandparents, my parents. Now let's look at her with her paternal grandparents. So once again, I've got the dad or her grandfather on top and then grandmother. And this one, there's a little flaw. Again, this happens probably because these were transfers into my heritage, tested at Ancestry, and it looks like there's a little missing piece here. This is probably supposed to be red, although it could be gold, it's just missing. But besides that, we could go to the next one, but we can see here again, gold is grandma, and this is from my husband. He gave her an entire chromosome too. Now these larger chromosomes don't that often uh, get passed on to the children, the grandchildren as a full piece, but here we've got a full chromosome two from her grandmother and basically a full chromosome three from her grandfather. Sometimes we're missing these end pieces and here's another one, but this one's not, and we just really don't worry about those end pieces. 
let's look at all four grandparents at once. So here's all four grandparents and it's dad's dad, dad's mom, mom's dad, mom's mom. So it's my husband's parents and then my parents. And again, we have this little gap here, but we can look at the two. And again, that light gray in the background, that's my daughter's chromosome. And where it turns color, that's where those people are sharing. So again, chromosome one, um, this piece right here, she shares with her paternal grandfather who's tested. And here we have, this is her maternal grandmother, my mom. And where she shares green, she's sharing DNA because she inherited it. That's how she got it from uh, me and then from my mom and back in time. So this is how segments of DNA get passed along. Now, I think it'd be fun to also look at some cousins. She does not have any cousins who have taken a DNA test, but I have a couple cousins. So these are my cousins. So they're her first cousins once removed because she's a generation different than, than them. So first, let's look at a cousin that's on my dad's side of the tree. So here's my cousin. She is going to be green. So my parents, again, my dad is red and my mom is gold. You can see that the green matches the red, the green matches the red, green matches red. And as we scroll through this, the green should always match the red. And I don't think we see any problems. It's always matching the red. And so if I didn't know who this cousin was and I could look at this, this is how we do even more distant matches. I could say, huh, this cousin is related to my dad's. Basically, that's what we could do. Okay, and let's look at a cousin from my mom's side. So again, it's her first cousin once removed. It's an older cousin, um, a generation higher up. So let's take a look at that. Again, red is my dad, orange is my mom. And if I didn't tell you who this cousin was, we could look and we could see there's the yellow and the gold, yellow and gold, yellow and gold. So we know gold is my mom, so my daughter's maternal grandmother. And so we would know this cousin is on her mom's mom's part of the tree. Now we do have one little mistake here. There's this tiny piece of yellow here. If we hover over it, it's 6.8 centimorgans. And the centimorgan is basically how big the piece is. And small segments can be false segments. And so we can see that this doesn't make sense that, I know my parents are not related at all, but, um, and we can see that this segment is probably not a real segment, so I would just ignore that. But again, if I didn't know who this person was, I could look through this and see that the gold is always matching up with the yellow. And let's take one more time. This time I'm gonna look at some mystery matches for you to help me figure out. So this time I've added the red and gold. This is my husband's part of the tree. Red is the dad, gold is the mom. So I always have dad, then mom. And remember, this is that little mistake that we're just not gonna worry about. So dad, mom. We have yellow, green, I'm gonna call it teal and blue. So we can see, let's look at yellow first, or let's scroll down. I see a great chromosome here on three. We have yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue. All this yellow, green, and blue is matching red. Remember red, that's the first line. So that's her dad's dads. This is the paternal grandfather. And so I can tell that all these matches are related on this dad's dad's part of her tree. I know who three of these people are. The blue one is a mystery match and the kit actually says DNA kit. So I don't know who they are, but from this, I can tell that they are on her dad's dad's part of the tree. Now, so these are all match matching red, the yellow, green, and blue. But that teal, let's look at some of the teal. Well, here's a teal and it's matching orange, not red. Here's a teal matching orange, teal matching orange. And so teal, that would be on this, her dad's mom's part of the tree instead. We're back to my daughter and her four grandparents. And I'm so thankful we have her and her four grandparents so we can see and study how these segments were passed along to her. And we can see, let's look at this one, the crossover points where on her dad's chromosome, it was only broken one, it was only recombined here. But for me, it was recombined one, two, three places. And so this is a great study. And I'm gonna be sharing more about what we can do with these chromosome browsers and let you see some of the beauty of this and see where our DNA actually came from. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.